live going live going live going live welcome back to the o show everything crypto and nfts every day it is another manic monday i don't know about you guys but let me tell you because listen we're gonna get into xrp the hinman emails what we can expect fingers crossed also we're gonna get into the hard truths okay i'm going to be um I'm still going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to be taking some content from context for these things. What is going on? Oh, okay. 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 I hope my internet doesn't get cuckoo right now. But anyways, we're going to go ahead. We're going to go through and we're going to talk about all this stuff um, and see what happens because things are a little bit crazy right now. And yeah, and I am still upset about the crypto companies getting sued. The reason why is because I believe in entrepreneurism. I believe people should be able to create businesses and to make money and to thrive with clear regulation and guidelines. That's something you should be upset about. You should be mad that the SEC is refusing to give you guidelines and then coming after you for creating a business and wanting to improve your quality of life. I think that's something to be reasonable about. I think it's something to be very reasonable and you should be mad about it too. Again, you guys, the more laws that they introduce, it's harder to get those repealed and they always insert extra stuff. But anyways, let me tell you all about my morning, okay? So Lo woke up at, um, and I have subscriptions set up for Tic Tac so I can get additional revenue or whatever it is. Yeah, I do like Tangent Wallet. I do like Tangent Wallet for fast purchases and that type of stuff for fast access, but it's not something I would keep all of my crypto assets on. Um, for crypto assets that I'm holding long-term, I like Paper Wallets, I like Ledger and Trezor, and I like backing up my seed phrase in a proper way. Um, but anything that's done, and I love Arculus too, so anything that's done on a mobile, just a little bit of, of assets there. Okay. But anyway, so low woke up, we got a tiff last night. We got a tiff last night. <sighs> My daughter is me. She is me. Um, so anyways, um, she woke up at like five this morning and I was like hoping to like do my affirmations, get my stuff done. I'm like, mentally, I'm a little bit cuckoo today. And she woke up at five and I'm like, oh, <sighs> But again, you know, I understand that my daughter is not going to be a baby forever and I need to cherish these moments. So I am. But at the same time, I could still be like, you need to go to sleep. You need to go to sleep. And that's OK. That's OK. It's part of being a mom and all that stuff. But anyways, let's get into it. We've got a lot to cover today. And then Lo and I are traveling to Atlanta tomorrow. We're going to be um, hanging out with the Bit Squad um, for our podcast and um, Frenemies Forever. <laughs> so guys, make sure to subscribe to that. It's basically me just yelling at Ben and telling him how stupid he is and how much better I am than him. That's what the podcast is. But Lo's going to go, going to go hang out with his kids. Um, she's going to go on a big jet plane. She's excited. But let's go ahead and get into what's happening. First and foremost, we have 160 concurrent viewers. Um, thank you to Pew Pew, Christopher, Explicit, Max, Drew, Addicted, um, Leo, Crimson, and Alex for being early here. We have a poll at the top. The poll is, will there be any progress in the SEC versus Ripple case after the him and dockets are unsealed? 55% said yes, 27 said no, 11% said sushi, and 6% said nachos because I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. We have 39 likes. Please smash a like and get this pushed out. We want to get as much people to watch this to hear unbiased information as we can, okay? And as always, hear what I say, please fact check me and go get additional information elsewhere. First and foremost, we need to talk, I think this project just rugged, okay? Be very careful with meme coins, you guys. This project right here, look at this. This is what a rug looks like, okay? This is when you remove liquidity. This is not good. We don't like this. This is bad. My mouse, I don't know what it is. I'm still trying to figure out what's going on with my mouse. Anyways, this is the current crypto market right now. This is going to be the daily. So things are kind of hesitant right now. This, the red that we're seeing, we're seeing like 4.6% on curve, um, PLS 5%, negative 5%, HEX negative 3% or 7%, APE negative 6%. This is not as bad as what we saw over the weekend. We saw on the daily chart, I believe we saw like um like 20 percent drops all of those types of things okay and that was bad people were freaking out but we did start to see a little bit of rebounds please understand though meme coins like this the most of them are probably going to rug most are probably going to go to zero and if you do decide to use disposable income and put some money in this stuff that's your business but you better take profit as fast as you can so be i wanted to just remind you guys on that um all right let's take a look at bitcoin and then we'll talk about xrp i promise so this is the current bitcoin chart um, we were able to sustain back above $25,700. This was a very important area of support. I personally think we're going to continue to consolidate above here. However, MACD and Market Cipher are looking a little bit bearish. Uh, MACD is a lagging indicator, so that could be part of the part a little bit scary over there taking a look at the 12 hour 12 hours also indicating some more downward action however we did print a green dot when you get these big daddy chad green dots like this this does indicate a local bottom was found 
but this is the 12 hour chart. Six hour chart is showing a little bit more flatness. Four hour is actually looking like we want to break support over here. So I would be cautious. If we break support, I would be looking for a potential move down to about 20, like 25, three, 25, four. That's what I would be looking at. The 45 minute chart is also indicating another tap here at about 25,700. So if you're interested in shorting, I've got a Femex ref link down below. Please use that. Please understand anytime you use a centralized exchange, read the terms of services, not your keys, not your coins. If you leave crypto there and the exchange goes down, you can lose your funds. So please understand how that works. Centralized exchanges are really great to buy crypto assets, remove them to cold storage, or if you're actively trading, just understand the risk. I also got new eyeshadow yesterday and I like it. It came in the mail. Um, I'm not sending you friend requests, sweetheart. That's an impersonator. I wouldn't send you one. Um, anyway, so let's now talk about what is happening here. Oh, what are all these tabs? What are these tabs? Oh, here we go. Let's talk about XRP. Okay. Let's talk about XRP. We're going to see what's going on. All right. First and foremost, this is going to be a Ripple versus the SEC case update. Okay. Because we're still we're still trucking along here. I want to say um, the SEC has been going after Ripple for the last two years now, and that does impact the price of XRP. The price of XRP is directly impacted by the SEC. Why? Because it's negative fundamental news. I understand that things do operate globally, and XRP is still used. It's not they're not having issues on other in other countries or other places, but. United States of America is still a pretty big player on a financial level um, globally, but things are starting to change. We're going to talk about that a little bit later in the show. So the Hinman documents are going to be unsealed tomorrow, June 13th. Okay, June 13th, these documents will be unsealed. And these documents relate to a speech given in 2018 by former director of the SEC's corporation finance division, Bill Hinman. The reason why this is important is this person worked for the SEC and they basically want to, Ripple wants to take these emails this speech, this information, and they want to present it to the court and they want to say, hey, this person was in charge of the SEC, affiliated with the SEC, worked with them, and is indicating, you know, specific things. So they want to use that in court, okay? They want to use that in court. And hopefully that we get some good stuff coming out of it. During the speech, Hinman expressed the view that Ethereum should not be classified as a security. I agree with him. I don't think Ethereum is a security. I don't think XRP is a security. I think majority of crypto assets are not securities. They have valid use cases. You can do different things with them and they make it different than stocks. With stocks, you're basically buying a stock to fund a company. You can do that with crypto companies. Some crypto companies do release tokens, um, not only to initially uh, help fund different things that happen in the company like crowdfunding, but they also have valid use cases with Ethereum. You can use it to build, um, you can use it you know, for NFTs, you can use it to build other tokens. And with XRP, they help with remittances and settlements and those types of things, okay? So I think that if a token does have a valid use case and it's also used to raise money, I think that's okay. I think that that's okay. I don't think it should be deemed a security. I think it should be deemed as something different. And I also have no problem with the hybrid usage of it. I really, really don't. I don't think there's any problem with that either. I think that people should be able to raise money if they want. If you want, if you're a small business in the United States of America and you want to raise money, you go to your bank. Most time, most times they're not going to give it to you. And that's not fair. You should be able to, you should be able to become an entrepreneur. You should be, I'll, I don't understand why the public servants don't have a fund to where People that have small businesses that are legitimate, they can go ahead and raise money. I mean, there's different crowd crowdsourcing websites, so I don't understand why this is issue. That's just my opinion. I'm nobody. I'm just a just a YouTuber. Just a YouTuber. Also, too, a lot of this information from the SEC, these laws, and I know they're trying to go back and fight about it. They're written in the 30s. They're written before fax machines. So that's where it also becomes problematic because we're talking about regulating things that weren't even created yet. That doesn't make sense to me. One plus one equals 69, okay? One plus one equals 69. Um, also too, um, yesterday, John Deaton said the emails will likely help Coinbase and Ripple in the court of public opinion and hopefully drive bipartisan efforts, efforts in Congress. This is what John Deaton said, front of the channel, we adore him. So basically he said, the emails won't change the Howie analyst, but will likely show the difficulty in implying 1930s, 40s president to modern day technology. That's exactly what I said. That is exactly what I said. Okay. You don't have to change the 1930s laws. Okay. Because those apply to traditional assets. But we do need to create a brand new 
We do need to create a brand new brand new framework for assets that were that were created in the last 20 years. That's important. And this is different than the dot com bubble. The reason why it's different than the dot com bubble is because these are not stocks, they're not penny stocks. They work differently. Most crypto assets have valid utility. They have valid utility. They're not like stocks, okay? It's not an IPO. It's a lot different, okay? Just because some aspects may satisfy that, they would still need to settle, um, come up with separate jurisdiction for it. Hester Purses, Safe Harbor Act that allowed crypto companies to come in to register um, and basically to work along legislate or lo- work along lawmakers and enforcement people to show that their assets were not a security, okay? This is important. These are good things to talk about. Anyways, the emails will likely help Coinbase and Ripple in the court of public opinion and hopefully drive bipartisan efforts in Congress. The only thing I have to argue with John here is that um, bipartisan effort makes me a little bit nervous, makes me a little bit nervous. But at the end of the day, I am voting for a pro crypto candidate, for a pro Bitcoin candidate. And I also got some inside news about a particular presidential candidate that is going to be coming out with pro Bitcoin and crypto um, stuff soon. Okay. Stuff soon. I'm not going to tell you who it is. I'm not going to tell you who contacted me. I'm looking to set up a call with them this week. And if I can set up a call with them this week and advocate for retail investors, I will be over the moon. And a lot of people say, Wendy, you know, you just talk all this mess on social media. What do you do? What do, what do, what do content creators do? This is some of the things we do. I'm blessed enough that I have a large audience and I can articulate some of these ideas to you. And I'm able to get, sometimes I'm able to get opportunities to help advocate. So this is what I do. This is how I give back. If you want to help and give back more and fight, join the DCTA. We're going to be doing a lot of really, really cool stuff. And I hope you guys join and I hope you have your voices heard. If you're not familiar with what the DCA does, it's, um, it's an organization and they have um, a little section there to where it automates, um, an email for you to send to your Congress members, no matter what are the state representatives, no matter what state you're in. Um, and it'll help you send the message to them that the SEC has um, overstepped their bounds. So this is good. But we have some more Ripple news that we do need to discuss. Next, Ripple versus SEC case update. So let's go ahead and talk about that. We did, 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 did. we talked about that. We talked about that. Okay. Canada's lo- this is important. This is good news for XRP. Canada's largest university starts XRP validator in new partnership with Ripple. And this is interesting that this is coming out of Canada because Canada is also, the DCTA is on my website. Please join them, CryptoWindio.com. CryptoWindio.com. Please do your due diligence and see if that makes sense. But it's very interesting that we're seeing this come out of Canada, this partnership with Ripple. Um, The reason being is Canada has also started to kind of crack down on what's going on with crypto. But let's go ahead and read a little bit more and see what's happening here. So the University of Toronto plans to start an independent XRP ledger validator in a new partnership with Ripple. It will primarily process payments. UOT is the largest university in Canada by enrollment. The move is a part of Canada of Ripple's University Blockchain Research Initiative in Canada, UBRI. Ripple has already invested more than two million in Canada's top universities and colleges over five years. How sad! How sad that Ripple had to pay two hundred million dollars to battle the SEC, and they could have taken that money and done different types of initiatives to teach people about blockchain and help people get jobs. Because let's face it, you go to college, you want to get an education so you can get a good job. That's what this is. How sad that we wasted, that Ripple had to waste $200 million because the United States of America couldn't get it together. That's exactly what happened. That $200 million could have been used because they have only spent $2 million on on Canada's top universities and colleges in over five years. How cool would that be if they actually use that money for community colleges in, um, in the United States of America or high schools or, um, or junior highs or low income areas. That would have been awesome. Maybe I'll hit the speed bag. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. All right. UOT joins current Canadian UBRI partners, University of Waterloo and Toronto Metropolitan University. I believe Crypto Mason and Meg are out in Canada. Shout out to them. I am excited about the Killer Whale show we will be filming at the end of the month. All right. Ripple launched um, UBRI in June of 2018, committed over $50 million, partnered with 17 universities from across the world at the time. It's distributed more than $47 million to its global university partners and increased its commitment to $80 million this year. $80 million this year. Can you imagine if that $200 million could have, instead of paying attorney's fees, could have just been given to different educational programs in the United States of America? $200 million. In this little article over here, it says 
Ripple partnered with 17 universities from across the world. And they've paid, they've committed over $80 million. They spent $200 million fighting the SEC. This is crazy. Do you see how this works? You see how corrupt the system is? You see how this works? We have 367 concurrent viewers here. Do, 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 do. Stop with clickbait titles. No, I can't. Unfortunately, I cannot stop with clickbait titles because if I do not, you won't watch because YouTube won't process it. Okay. Also too, this is important. The Hinman, this isn't even clickbait. XRP ripple incoming Hinman emails and sealed. It's happening tomorrow. That's not even clickbait. Y'all weird. Um, Kemet said, government has $31 trillion def deficit, but want to have control of my money. Exactly. And that's a little bit problematic for me. All right. Let's go ahead and get into the next piece of information over here. We have 124 likes, 366 of you in here. Smash the like. Get this out. Get this out. We need more. We need more. All right. So this was a good, happy field story for Ripple. Now let's talk about this. Okay, let's talk about more of the SEC being absolute ridiculous dodo birds. Okay, let's see. All right. U.S. judge dismisses lawsuit against DeFi startup pool together. He or excuse me, they ruled the federal court system was not appropriate arena to address against the platform. The lawsuit filed by former congressional staff. October 2021 alleged the platform violated New York state gambling laws by allowing people to evade financial regulations, scam consumers. This is the thing. New York can say this all they want, but there's damn lottery ticket booths everywhere, scratchers everywhere. That's legal. The lawsuit filed by former congressional... Oh, we said that already. Joe Kent, the former staffer, filed the suit as an parent test case and legislators explored avenues to pursue legal actions against DeFi actors. Ken previously worked for Warren. That makes sense. That makes sense. Can't work for Warren. Pool Together launched an NFT collection called Pooley to raise funds to fight the case. Raised around 135000 worth of crypto within two hours of the drop. Good for them. This is a great way. Crypto is a great way to crowdfund and to raise money for things. It's basically like a GoFundMe, but a little bit different because it actually has utility. The fiat fiat currency has zero utility. All you can do is give it, use it for pay, and then the number goes down. The utility of the fiat currency is that the value goes down after time because of our public sermons, serpents, and how ridiculously and disgusting they are. Upsetting, absolutely upsetting. Now let's talk about some of our favorite crypto assets over here. Solana, Cardano, Polygon push back against the SEC security label. Another thing you understand, you guys, with the SEC, the SEC indicated that these are securities in a lawsuit. However, they have to prove it in court. Solana, Cardano, Polygon are not securities yet. This has to be proven in court, okay? Has to be proven in court. Has to be. All right. Although all disagreed, each each organization tied the tree of tokens showing various levels of conviction. These assets were also delisted from Robinhood. This is important. Why is this important? Is because Robinhood is a household name. Everybody knows who Robinhood is, especially because of the panorama, because of the AMC, the GameStop, all of that type of stuff. A lot of people use Robinhood to trade stonks. They started to list crypto assets because they're a business. They want to make money. SEC came in with this case with all this BS, and then they just delisted them or they're deciding to delist them because they don't want the drama. They don't want to deal with it. Why? Because they don't want to have to pay $200 million in a long drawn out court case. Who wants to pay $200 million? Who wants to deal with this stuff at all? Why would you? What a waste of time. Embarrassing. Anyways, let's move on. Um, combine these tokens have a market cap of over $21 billion. Wow. Solana, Matic, Cardano, $21 billion altogether. Each of these tokens have dumped over 30% in the last seven days. This is market manipulation to me. This is market manipulation to me because fundamental analysis impacts the valuation of different assets. Okay. If there were, for example, all the stuff that happened with Target, what did that cause? What did that happen? This is a fundamental analysis. Target did something. The customers didn't like it. Number goes down. Their stock is going to go down as well. Okay. That's what happens. 
because of the actions of the SEC, because we don't have any legal framework, number went down. That is negative fundamental analysis. That's the way it works. That is market manipulation, in my opinion, because Target darn well knew what they were going to do was wrong, was going to make people upset. Okay? The SEC doing the same thing, doing the same thing. But they did it with an intent to purposely cause a number to go down. Target might not have known. I don't think they did. I don't think they even cared about it. Anyways, though, is what it is. I don't want to get polit- too political about that. The latest responses. Ada Cardano was the first to have its regulatory status defended. June 6, the blockchain research engineering firm that created Cardano, IOG, said Ada has never been a security under U.S. securities laws. I actually did hear from an attorney years and years ago, it was maybe 2019, that Cardano was a secure, that they were going to call Cardano a security because of the way the staking pool works. I don't believe that. I don't think Cardano is a security. I'm not a law person. Okay? Not a law person. They said the lawsuits will not impact the company's operations in any way. They're not going to. Cardano does a lot of things overseas. That's one thing that they have done really well is Cardano has a lot of partnerships and does a lot of great thing overseas. Now they also have DEXs, which is good for them. So I think that Cardano is doing the right thing. The latest filing with the SEC demonstrates we still have a long way to go. Pro Ripple lawyer Jeremy Hogan showed support for for Charles H. defense and Ada in the wake of the SEC allegations. Let's go ahead and take a look at this tweet over here. All right. Oh, this is Solana. All right. Now, Solana came out and said this, the Solana in, in, in their response. The Solana Foundation disagrees with the characterization of Sol as a security. We welcome the con- continued in- engagement of policymakers as constructive partners on regulation to achieve legal clarity on these issues for the thousands of entrepreneurs across the U.S. building in the digital asset space. The Solana Builder community is the strongest in the industry. No, but Okay. Um, and continues to build exceptional products, products and projects. The Solana Foundation remains committed to those building for the long haul to create and continue the best blockchain for decentralized future. I think that's great. All right. Now, Matic Polygon fired back as well. They says we're we're proud of the history of Polygon Network developed outside the U.S. They use that particular terms for a reason, developed outside the U.S., deployed outside the U.S., and focused to this day on the global community that supports the network. Ooh, the shots fired here. Matic was a necessary part of the Polycon technology from day one, ensuring that the network would be secure and remains just to this day. Given our focus on network security, we made sure Matic was available to a wide group of persons, but only with actions that did not target the U.S. at any time. They're right. They're right. But it's sad, though, because a lot of these really great companies are going to be leaving. They're going to be leaving the U.S., and it just really sucks. The non-US market is the largest in the world, and we are grateful for all the thoughtful work being done on all aspects of this technology around the globe, including regulators and policymakers. We're confident in the actions we took in the past and how focused we are on building the future exciting tech announcements this week. Yeah, how sad that they have to phrase it that way. Yikes. Ooh, yikes. We have 389 concurrent viewers, 185 likes. Please smash a like. We need to push this out. Push this out into the world pushes out into the world all right now one of the things i want to say let's go ahead and see this let's go ahead and see this i've got too many tabs open we got so many freaking tabs all right yeah i'm not going to go through all this this is kind of a lot to read kind of a lot to read all right Picking and choosing tokens to prosecute is pretty unfair, says former SEC cyber chief. Robert Cohen says the SEC selective enforcement is having real impact on people and real businesses. I love him for this. I love him for this. And he's 100% right. When you are targeting companies, okay, this is the issue with the SEC, okay? You have no guidelines. Companies build. You sue them later. You find them after. You threaten to jail them. You destroy their, you you destroy all aspects of them, their families, their employees, their livelihoods. That's what's happening in the U.S. Coinbase went in 30 times, tried to meet with Gary Gensler 30 times in 2022. 30 times. But Gary Gensler was too busy meeting with Sam Bankman fried Okay. This is what's happening. This is why you should be mad. Even if you hate crypto, you should be mad about all of this. You really, really should. 
You should. It's sad. It, it's, it hurts me as a person because I just see, I just feel like, ugh, ugh. All right. Anyways, some more from Robert Cohen, the former SEC cyber chief. He said there is an element of bad luck and randomness and getting singled out to be one of the tokens that are mentioned in the lawsuits when there's hundreds that could have been. There's legitimate bad actors, legitimate bad actors. OK, legitimate bad actors here. Legitimate bad actors. OK, look at this. Look at this token. These people rug this token. This is what it looks like. They remove liquidity, a rug. Where's the SEC? Where is the SEC? Not here. Okay. He said there's element of bad luck and randomness and gets singled out to be one of the tokens that are mentioned in the lawsuits when there's hundreds that could have been. When you think about a government taking action, that sort of randomness seems unfair. It does seem unfair. It doesn't make any sense. Nobody lives their life this way. You're living in fear. It's like you're in an abusive relationship with a narcissist. That's what it is. That's what it is. At the SEC, we're passing rules. It affects everyone the same way, and people should have a chance to comment. They should. You should be able to say, hey, this isn't okay. He also said that the complaints may never actually go to trial. They might get settled. They might get dismissed for other reasons. There may never actually be a decision on whether a token is a security. And that's a problem. We, and I, I don't like that I have to say this because I, I personally don't need law. I don't need people coming in and telling me how to live my life. I really, really don't. Law has never really done well by me. It really hasn't. So and I do have kind of a bad outlook and a negative outlook on that. But I understand other people need it. I understand there is a need for protections to certain aspects, okay? My issue is, though, and again, I'm about compromise. I'm about compromise. I'm about compromise here. I understand that we have to work with the people in power because that's the way the world works. But my issue is, it, I feel like it is very unfair. It should be illegal. It's definitely unethical to go after a company that you didn't even give rules to. They didn't. Crypto assets were not created in the 30s and 40s when the securities laws were put into place. You cannot govern something that wasn't created. You can't use old laws. You can use parts of it. No, I don't need law. You can use parts of it. You can. But you shouldn't all, it shouldn't all apply. It's very unfortunate. But this is what it is. And this is why we do need to fight. Why we do need to fight. We're doing our best. I'm doing my best to stand up against Gensler. And again, the blue people are affiliated with Gensler. And that's for very, very frustrating because I do like some of the social issues that the blue people have. But now I'm, I'm telling y'all I'm voting for whoever is poor old crypto because I'm a firm believer. If you have access to more money, you have access to better products and services. And a lot of these social issues that we have will go away if you have money. If you have money. Okay, now let's get into the next. Shout out to Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban is going hard. Love him or hate him, Mr. Mark Cuban. Let's tell you what he's talking about over here. Actually, I want to check my YouTube chat and see how you beautiful people are doing. Okay, 414 viewers, 214 likes. Cough, cough, loyalty labs. Make sure it's selected to the live chat at the top. I don't know how to do that. Shout out to Baby G. Good morning to Raider. Because we are star seeds. I love that. Lifelong blue, but I can't vote for these people this cycle. I, I you know what? And Pew Pew, I appreciate you coming out and saying this because at, the, at this point, this is the thing. It's just so upsetting. Like America has become this place to where we care so much about the most minuscule dumb stuff, like stupid things. Okay. Wow just dumb stuff like a lot of dumb social issues that aren't even necessarily happen. like i'm born and raised la county so when people say this and this and that, 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 that i'm like what are you guys talking about in some cases like i don't see a lot of that stuff over here because i'm blessed but i understand that there's things that happen in other places but what these blue people have done and what, what what's happening is they want to destroy every aspect of our life okay they want to be involved in what's happening i'm not saying the red people are perfect either because some of them they say dumb stuff they say dumb stuff okay I'm going to show you who said wh what dumbness occurred. And this is what, and, and this is, a, I don't care. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. I don't care. I'm going to pull it up. Where the heck is it? Where is it? This. You want to get mad at me? Get mad at me. This is from Tyler Winklevoss from um, Gemini. 
Roe cost red the midterms. Warren and Gensler war on crypto will cost Dems the 2024 election. He's right. 100%. And of course, I had to fire back because that's what I do. And I said this, women's reproductive rights are a meme. It's used for as an emotional tool to make you think they care. They don't. I will debate this with you all day long. I will talk to you about the way I was treated in the hospital. I will talk to you when I was having my daughter. I will talk to you about the way I was treated when I worked at my corporate job. I work for one of the most liberal blue companies in the world, in America, and the way I was treated there. And they're supposed to care about women's reproductive rights. They don't. These people don't care. And that's why I'm telling you, that's why I'm telling you, if you have access to more money, you have access to better products and services, and it fixes a lot of the social issues. That's it. You don't have to like something, but it's not my duty to tell you what you can and can't do with yourself. It's not. Anyways, back at it. All right. Go back to Mr. Mark Cuban. All right. Next story over here. Mark Cuban on the SEC. He called out the SEC for failing to provide crypto firms with clear registration process. He claimed that no registration process exists in the SEC's framework for investment contract analysis of digital assets document and says it makes it nearly impossible to know what constitutes security in crypto. He's right. He is 100% right. He noted that other sectors in the finance industry are receiving a lot more transparency from the regulators. They are. They are. Every single area in the United States has, you can do this, you can't do that. Not crypto assets. Because these people, Gensler, Warren, Biden's people, they don't want you to have access to a better quality of life because they want you to be so reliant on the public servants and UBI, they want to absolutely, what they're doing is they're literally destroying. They are destroying what this country was built off of. And a lot of people get mad. They're like, Wendy, capitalism is bad. Capitalism is fantastic. I fully support non-corporate capitalism. Why? Because I love to see people use their minds to educate themselves, to figure things out, how to use critical thinking and start businesses, teaching their kids to do this. Being your own boss is hard. Being an entrepreneur is hard. I'm going through it this year. I'm having a hard time this year. But guess what? Guess what? I love critically thinking. I love talking about this stuff with you guys. I love talking to my daughter about it. It's amazing. I love seeing people that come to this country for a better quality of life thrive, whether it's a clothing store, whether it's a small business like a like a taco shop or different types of services they offer. I love that. I think it's amazing. I love people thriving. And the United States is making it hard for us to do that now. Very, very, very frustrating to me. Because I love I love to see people do well and come up with things. How, why do you think we have iPhones? Why do you think we have computers? Why do you think we have all these things? All these modern technologies, these were all created by entrepreneurs. Apple started out small. Microsoft started out small. They weren't big corporations. They didn't start out that way. Now they're corporations and a lot of them do terrible things. That's not the point. That's not the point. My point is we wouldn't have all these luxuries in the world. We wouldn't have all these luxuries in the world if we didn't have capitalism. Corporate capitalism, I got a problem with. Regular capitalism, let the people win. Let the people win. All right, back over here. Ba, ba, ba. They are public serpents and public servants. They are. They're yucky. Yucky, yucky. 445 concurrent viewers, 249 likes. We have 112 on Tiki Tacky. Smash the like. Smash the like. Get it out. Get it out. All the, I'm adding hearts to myself at this point. Well, the cheap labor thing, that's a whole... Also, too, shout out to Joshua for being a business owner. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. I love that. Cheap labor, we can talk about that at another time, okay? Um, that's a whole separate topic, and that has to do with your public servants. But I want to talk about Mr. Mr. Cuban over here. Let's talk about him. He noted that other sectors in the finance industry are receiving a lot more transparency from regulators. Cough, cough, banks. Cough, pop, banks. They explain they should do the same thing in crypto as an effort to determine which aspects of crypto are securities and which are not. Hello? Hello? Hello. Hello. 
Now, let's talk about Algorand. Algorand and Flow crashed to all-time lows following the SEC's lawsuit. Let's take a look at Algo and Flow. Let's take a look. This is sad. And Gary Gensler shilled Algo in 2019, I believe. Of course he did. Why wouldn't he? This is Algo. This is the daily. Uh, da, 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 da. Yikes. How sad. How sad. How sad. This is Algo. And it's probably going to end up dumping. Um, let me show you guys something. There's a way. Da, 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 da. If you want to see um, lower levels on things, you can pull your fibs out and go to the lowest point on the chart and then pull it up to the highest point. We'll just do this for now. And that'll give you additional areas of support and resistance. And in this particular area, you would want to go ahead and get another fib and you can pull it out to see other areas that it could drop to. Algo is not doing too hot right now. And that sucks. Really, 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 really sucks. Yeah. So he sued Kim Kardashian for promoting a coin. Can we sue him for promoting Algo? You should do a class action lawsuit. I will support you. 142 on Tiki Tacky. Flow. Flow was, I think Dapper Labs use Flow for stuff. I think for Top Shot. I'm not 100% sure. Flow. Ugh, look at look at these charts. And these are a lot, a lot of the 49 cents. Oh, this is tragic. Look at this. That's so sad. Look at this. They're destroying. They are literally destroying. They are destroying everything. This is Matic Polygon. Look at this. 50 cents. We might see 36 cents. What else? We got Solana. Let's take a look. There's Solana. Looks. She looks like she's going to continue to fall. Let's see Cardano. I'm actually happy Cardano's dumping. You want to know why? I want to buy more. So I'll buy more because Cardano will do well. They'll be fine. Yep. Look at We'll get to two cents again. I doubt it, but this is a really terrible area over here. We, she j dipped all the way down to 21 cents. So shout out to those who got in at 21 cents. If you want to see the charts, you got to go over to YouTube. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about Algo again. Let's talk about what's happening. This is so sad. It really is so sad. Algo and Flow are among the tokens that the SEC described as unregistered security in recent lawsuits. SEC initially claimed Al Algo's security when it filed charges against Bittrex in April. This is the thing. When they're going after these exchanges, they pull different crypto assets and then they randomly call them securities. They randomly call them securities. It's, it's ridiculous. But again, they do have to prove it in court. Gensler shilled Algo to his students when he was a professor in MIT. Um, fell twenty. Both they both. I believe they both fell approximately twenty five percent in the last seven days. Both down more than sixty percent from their highs in February of twenty twenty three. Crypto Windio, the O show on my um, website. It's tragic, tragic. Now this story from Crypto Potato: Over fifty percent of Bitcoin on exchanges have moved outside the U.S. due to regulatory uncertainty. We'll see more of this. Crypto Quant report shows that more than half of the Bitcoin that crypto firms hold for their customers has moved offshore and, and non international exchanges. Bitcoin reserves on US basic crypto exchanges are down to 2017 levels as they are being lost to non US platforms. Ethereum reserves have also been on a steady decline. About 50, Well, the thing with Ethereum, Ethereum is going to be a little bit different because they merged over from proof of work to proof of stake. And a lot of people are locking, or maybe they're taking their Ethereum and they're running their own nodes and they're doing the staking there, all of those things. So it kind of depends, okay? Also, trading volume, uh, da, 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 around 50% of Ethereum on exchanges are held outside of US. That makes sense for Ethereum because you Coinbase's staking services are under attack. And basically, what Coinbase did, they allowed poor people, they allowed poor people like myself, like y'all over there, to stake your Ethereum and earn that passive income um, because they were using they were using it to um, use to run the nodes on a more industrial level. Because you need thirty two ETH to run your node and to earn that passive income, so that makes with Ethereum that makes sense. Okay, that makes sense. Trading volume of international exchanges is four times greater than that of any U.S. platforms. Wow. Let me read that again. Trading volume of international exchanges is four times greater than that of U.S. platforms. So what does this mean? This means that people are trading overseas. Um, there, people are probably leaving the U.S., not at like a crazy number yet. Eventually they will be. And the other, the other exchanges outside of the United States are making money. So that means less tax revenue. That means less tax revenue. OK, 
Okay. I believe you need 32 Ethereum to do the node to do the staking and run the node thingy mabobber. I am not doing it because it's a little bit scary. I know Altcoin Daily, they told me a way to do it, and I'll go ahead and do that. Yeah, you do need 32, 32 directly stake. Yeah. So people are moving, they're moving their money overseas. So these exchanges overseas, they're paying the taxes on the, the revenue they make while the US is just losing, losing, losing while we're in a 31, 32 trillion dollar deficit. You see how that works? One plus one equals 69. Is what it is, though. Bitcoin spot trading volume dominance in the U.S. has fallen below 2017 levels. It is currently at 21%. Asia spot trading volume growth is as high as 30%. Asia's futures trading volumes growth is as high as 20%. Just said that. Oh, no, that was 30%. Also, market cap of U.S.-based stablecoins is down 35%, losing $15 billion so far this year. Hmm. Cool. Great. Binance is also going to be removing this following spot trading pairs. Um, Beefy, Dash, Fio, Gao. I don't know what any of these are. Um, these are probably, most of them are probably trash coins. Well, some of, I know what a couple are. Um, so yeah. So if you've got any of these coins on Binance, get them off. Uh, da -da. All right. Robinhood may crypto trading volume fall 68% to $2.1 billion. So let's talk about this. There's a lot of, a lot of caveats over here. Okay. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of caveats over here. So when we're talking about, um, like this story with Robinhood, Robinhood's may crypto trading volume fall 68% to $21 billion. Okay. Um, down 43% from April. On a yearly basis, crypto trading volume slowed 68%. Daily average trading revenue, a metric that tracks an average trade per day that generate commissions or fees was down 22% May. The metric was down 53% year over year for crypto trading. Okay, this is regarding crypto trading, but just understand that everybody's down. Everybody's down everywhere because we're the type of market we're in, okay? So that makes sense. And also too, with the recent regulatory FUD, Robinhood is delisting Matic, Cardano, and Solana. And that makes sense, plus the type of market that we're into. So this does make sense, but it's still very sad, and these numbers do matter. But again, understand that we still are in a bear market, and that's also attributing to this. It's not just because of the SEC, okay? So there's that. That's important information to think, and that's why I love doing the show, and I don't just like tweeting about this stuff because I'm able to communicate very, very, very much better. Non-KYC non exchange outside US are the only real ones I ever use. Me too. That's why we use Femex here. So if y'all want to use my ref link. Um, read the terms of services and you do what you're supposed to do. The ref link is going to be down below. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, Mike said, I sold off Ada because I got scared. That's okay, Mark. Um, or excuse me, Mike. That's okay. Do what you need to do. Um, take a step back. So this is why we talk about trading investing plans. Okay. This is why we talk about trading investing plans. Take a step back. Once you calm down and you feel a little bit confident again, create one for yourself. And that basically indicates the pros and cons of using disposable income to invest or trade different different assets, your time frame, et cetera. But that's more, hey, it's happened to me too. I told you guys when I was using, there was a there was a video I made that I panic sold all my alts. I did on that exchange. I did because I needed to get, I converted my alts. It was when we had that crazy drop. And I, a couple of them, a couple of positions, I, I did lose a little bit of money because I did, you know, I, I was planning on flipping them but that didn't work out well. And then I sold some of my moon bags, which it didn't matter, but I sold into stables and Bitcoin. So technically, even though I sold some of my alts at a bottom or I panic sold them, I sold them into Bitcoin or stables, which stables is fine. Bitcoin actually ended up buying at the bottom. So that does make sense. So that's okay. It happens. Um, but what you do, what I need to get my stuff off exchanges. And again, don't keep your stuff on exchanges. That's okay. Just take a step back and reanalyze what you want to do and figure out what works best for you and your family. Exactly. U.S. currency is a scam. It is a scam. The difference between a U.S. currency, fiat currency, and crypto assets is tell you? Let me tell you. So the US dollar is paper. Not only is it bad for the environment. Oh, hold on. We got, we got something. Uh, oh, thank you. Mixing. Thank you. Mixing. Thank you. Mixing. We just got some breaking news, breaking news. And we got a tweet about this. Ooh, ooh. Shout out to mixing. Shout out to Mixing. He is my producer, kind of, sort of, amazing, intelligent young man, and he helps me prepare for my shows every day because he's absolutely outstanding, and he just sent me this. All right. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on. All right. Hey, did my tweet not go through? 
Wait, is it over here? Hold on. I got to find my tweet. Did it go through? I don't know if it went through. Let's see. Maybe I, maybe I'm in trouble on Twitter. Oh, I want to show you guys. Yep. Fire Gary Gensler. Just in U.S. Congressman officially files bill to fire SEC Chair Gary Gensler. There's no source yet, but they will, I'm sure that they will post it. I'm sure they'll post it. What is Mixing saying? He says, oh, oh, shout out to Pew Pew. Apparently Pew Pew sent it in the chat first. Thank you, Pew Pew. I appreciate you. I'm sorry. Um, I just, I, I'm only really paying attention to when Mixing reaches out to me. Um, but yes, this is good. We'll get a source soon. We'll get a source soon, but yes, this is fantastic. Oh, my heart. My heart feels good right now. Oof. Crypto came, came cleaner says, step into my office, Gary. Step into my office. Well, this is a good stream, you guys. Wow. This is good. We have 471 concurrent viewers. Shout out to, oh, oh, wait, Pew Pew's got it. Shout out to Pew Pew. Shout out to Pew Pew. Yep. Right here. Right here. Woo. Yes. Right here. I got it. We got it live right here. From Warren Davidson. Got to bookmark this. Amen. God speed. The crypto community. I'm just going to say you have my vote. My vote and support. All right. So let's read what happened. So I'm very, very excited now. No, it's today. News. Yeah, it's today. It just happened. Today I filed. Hold on a second. Today I filed the SEC Stabilization Act to restructure the SEC and fire Gary Gensler. U.S. capital markets must be protected from my tyrannical chairman, including the current one. It is time for real reform and to fire Gary Gensler as chair of the SEC statement. Yes. 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 Well, they just they just pushed it through today. Let me go tell my baby she can get candy to celebrate. Mija, mommy's still filming? You can have candy. We're celebrating. Okay. okay. We're celebrating because we're going to try to get Gary Gensler fired. He's a bad guy that works for the SEC that wants poor people to stay poor. Yeah, he's a bad guy. Not mommy. A congressman is. But mommy's telling her audience about it. Okay, love you. Okay. I love being a mom. It's so much fun. It is so much fun. So much fun. I'm excited for her. She's been wanting candy all day. She's been wanting candy all day. <laughs> she's, she's been wanting candy all day. I'm ridiculous. I know you guys. I, I'm a little ridiculous here. All right. We're going to calm down. We're going to get back to the news. I love being a mom. It's so much fun though. Like, oh God, I love my life. 547 concurrent viewers. Thank you guys so much. And y'all go get candy too. Y'all go get candy and celebrate. Mixing, can you please clip that please? Can you please clip that? Y'all get candy. Go get candy. Go get ice cream. Go get your favorite snack. Go get candy. We're celebrating to get this a-hole out of there. Oh, my God. That's great. I love being a mom. All right. All right. All right, Wendy. Get it back together. Get it back together. Bring it in, baby. Bring it in. Okay. We talked about that. We talked about that. All right. Okay. We're going to touch on this a little bit, but I'm going to do a dedicated show on this. Okay. Crypto companies moving overseas where they're actually semi-welcome and an innovation because America is run by tyrant ivory towers. And A16Z is expanding to the UK. We plan to open our first international office in London later this year, and we'll host the next crypto startup school in 2024. Why the UK? Well, because they are, were, they are actually like to give some sort of guidance as to what's happening. So you know what? These people are going. A lot, and a couple of people gave me pushback on this. They're like $35 billion isn't a lot. Guess what? In the crypto industry, it's a lot of money. It's quite a bit of money. So you know what? I'm with it. I think this is fantastic. I think this is fantastic. And you know what? Make it hurt. The reason why these companies are opening up overseas is because they know what's going to happen in America or they're hedging against their bets. I support them. I'm happy. All right, we'll cover that later. All right, now there's another thing. China essentially is unbanning crypto. 
Just in Chinese bank BOCI issues country's first tokenized security on Ethereum blockchain. All right. I do want to talk about this a bit, okay? China, whatever crypto or Web3 things China does is still going to be heavily influenced by the by um, by their government, by their public servants, okay? With that being said, it's not going to be decentralized, but they're still making more progress than we are. And again, in Hong Kong, they allowed for 16 different cryptocurrency, crypto assets to be traded, okay? So there's that. China's playing 69D chess with us here, okay? Now... Let's see over here. Coinbase invited to set up shop in Hong Kong after SCC lawsuit. A legislator in Hong Kong invited Coinbase and other exchanges to establish operations in their city state. The legislator, Johnny, is a member of Hong Kong's Legislative Council and China's advisory body. And here's what he said. Let's go find that. Sorry, guys, my computer's a bit slow over here. Oh. Oh, I for some reason I didn't pull that. Um, I'll read it to you here. I'll read it to you here. Johnny said, Johnny said, I hereby offer invitation to welcome all global virtual asset trading operators, including Coinbase to Hong Kong for application official trading platforms and for their development plans. Please feel free to approach me. I'm happy to provide assistance. This is somebody from Hong Kong that is saying, come here, come register. We'll take your money. We'll take your money. While the U.S., said, F you, you're poor, you don't get to participate. We like to restrict our people. We like to keep you down. We like to keep you to be our subservient. We want you to do what we want to do. We want you on your knees. We want you on your knees. Not okay. Other countries, we'll take your money. We'll take your taxpayer revenue. I'm gonna put it back into the country. US is gonna go down. Other countries gonna go up. Because U.S. is so, we're too big and we have too many egotistical, self-serving, public servant D-bags in office that don't care about anybody else but themselves. And Mr. Soros stepped down and his son has taken over, so we got more evil coming in. And they fund a lot of terrible things. They fund a lot of terrible things. And they're probably the people that are behind this stuff. Because what they want, what these people want, is they want to take down these big companies in crypto so that traditional finance can swoop in. Because y'all know traditional finance is just a big party of this with a bunch of ivory tower elitists that don't want you to have anything. That don't want you to have anything. Why do I say this? Because the banks want to make money. Because crypto is a means to an end for them. That's why. And best believe when somebody does something bad in traditional finance, guess what happens? They get that, that company goes down and they get hired elsewhere. We've talked about it on the show. It's a revolving door of a-holes is what it is. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, gosh, golly. Gosh, golly. Gosh, golly. Shout out to Sweden. Aw, he's eating ice. They're eating ice cream over there. Shout out to South Africa. All right, we got some more stuff to cover. I'm on fire. I can't really yell because I've been talking. Okay, so Bank of China's BOCI issues first tokenized security in Hong Kong. Um, but 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 it's issued fully digital structured notes worth 28 million on Ethereum. It means they have successfully introduced regulated securities onto a public blockchain. So this is the interesting thing about it. Okay, Ethereum China is never going to be able to control never going to be able to control, but they're using Ethereum's technology to push out things, their government controlled stuff. Okay, fine. That's their business. Fine. That's their business. Okay. I still think it's a win. A win is a win. A win is a win. A win is a win. All right. All right. Senator Cynthia Loomis said her efforts to push a positive crypto regulatory framework is still in motion. She's been working with Senator Kristen Gilbrand on a bipartisan initiative to propose extensive regulations. The effort is anticipated to make significant progress in Congress this year. It could provide crucial framework for the industry asset. Bill aims to define cryptocurrencies and potentially removing the securities designation. Yes, yes. Yes, that's what we need because crypto works differently than these traditional financial products that were built or created in the 30s and 40s, okay? That's what it was. That's what it was. It's different. 
Again, I use a term fax machine. Y'all don't even use fax machines. I bet you there's some people on TikTok, you young kids. I love y'all, but you probably don't even use fax machines. And my YouTubers, my babes, y'all don't even use fax machines because everything's freaking digital now. Okay? That technology is gone. I don't even know what I can use. Printers. We still use printers, right? Printers weren't even made in the 30s and the 40s. It just doesn't make sense. Okay. And FJP Morgan. FJP Morgan. <sighs> okay, there's a lot to go down. There's a lot to talk about. I'm going to talk about this, okay? This is important. I want you to hear this, okay? This this is going to piss me off before I go. This is going to piss me off to the to to the high heavens this story here, okay? But we got to talk about it. You guys need to know. All right. Sorry, Charles, we're not going to talk about you today. Okay. JP Morgan report shines a spotlight on the regulatory crossroads faced by the U.S. crypto industry. The SEC thinks most cryptocurrencies should be classified as securities and therefore most crypto companies and trading should fall under supervision and comply with regulatory framework that are currently applied to other securities. Why is he saying this? Why is he saying this? Hold on, there's more here. He's saying this because they want to make sure that poor people like yourself don't have access. They want to make sure unless you're an accredited advancer, you don't have access to this stuff, okay? It's JP Morgan. They can't make money scamming you that way. With the SEC tightening its grip on Binance and Coinbase, the future of crypto should hinge on classification of cryptos as securities. The article here from Coindesk states, SEC crypto crackdown adds urgency for U.S. lawmakers to produce regulatory framework this year, J.P. Morgan. They want regulatory framework to serve their personal benefit because they want to make money off of you. To make money off of you. But I want to show you something. JP Morgan, F JP Morgan, and I'll show you why I've got a problem with JP Morgan. Where is it? I'm not going to read it out loud. I'm just going to pull it up on the screen. Well, actually, I'll do a little bit for y'all, okay? I'll do a little bit for y'all. JP Morgan reportedly to pay $290 million in a settlement. Guess what settlement that is? You want to know why these people don't want blockchain to thrive? You want to know why they want to regulate? You want to know why they want a CBDC that picks and chooses what information is public? You want to know why? Because when you have a tr when you have transparency, when you have a public ledger, when you have blockchain technology, everything you do is there. So if you send money to somebody, they know. Even the mixers, you can tell. So when they're doing these horrible things, the public can see. The TikTokers are going to see it. The YouTubers are going to see it. The citizen journalists are going to see it. They're going to see, people are going to see it and you're going to get called out for your bad behavior and you can't hide the atrocities you're doing anymore. Yes, you can use gold. Yes, you, you can use cash. Yes, there's still ways you can do it, but crypto assets and blockchain technology make it harder for the bad guys to bad. That industry, I want to say, made over third. I want to say, I don't know how much billions they made. $290 million settlement. $290 million. On that note, on that note, think, follow the money. Follow the money. Follow the money. Anyways, Windio is out. I'm sending y'all love and light and I'm going to have a fire video for you guys at 3.30 p.m. PST today, okay? So make sure you like this video. Make sure you guys watch that other video because I'm going the F off. Thank y'all for watching. Be safe out there in these streets and hear what I say. Listen to yourself. Wendy O is out. Bye-bye. Tic Tac wanted me to, hold on a second. Ah, da, 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 da. All right, let's end this here. Hold up. Stick around, TikTok.